All right, so when you want to talk about DJ technique and DJ music, we have to start with, with the one, um, Grandmaster Flash. You know, I talked about him a little bit when we talked about Herc. Uh, he is just so f foundationally important to hip hop DJing styles, um, you know, and, and turntablism, which is using the turntable as a musical instrument um, and not just playing other people's, <clears throat> you know, music. Now, Flash is, is insane because he was not only an innovator, he innovated with technique, he also innovated um, with. Uh, you know, technology and how to use technology in different ways um, to get it to do what you want, want it to do, which is also what Herc did and, um, you know, and, and kind of is, you know, the underlying logic in so many ways of, of hip hop DJ culture and hip hop culture in general is, is making, you know, ascribing new meanings to products, using them in different ways that suit the subculture. and. Um, you know, uh, I mean, using turntables to make music out of, to make culture out of, you know, um, versus what they were intended for, which was for consuming professionalized culture, you know. Um, but Flash was, you know, a uh, very interesting case, you know. He went to Herc's parties, um, you know, he was, you know, educated in the hip hop arts, he knew about the breaks, um, you know, but he didn't really have, you know, early on a lot of opportunities and he kind of, you know, developed his own style, um, you know, which is called the quick mix, the quick mix theory, which he later introduced to people. And he became like the biggest, the greatest, um, biggest, largest name DJ in the late seventies, um, in the Bronx and in the, in the hip hop scene. Um, and with that came a, a very big ego uh, that he still has to this day. Flash, I hope you're not watching. Don't hold it against me, but you know, um, which made when his group, uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, when they signed eventually to Sugar Hill Records, which basically displaced his role entirely because they were just rapping over session bands. Um, you know, that really did some things to him. Um, you know, and. Um, We'll talk a little bit about that, but Flash was really known for retrofitting technology. So Flash went to uh, Samuel Gomper's, I believe, vocational school in the Bronx. So he was into like electronics, essentially. So um, one thing I talked about in the DJ setup was the headphone cue. And the headphone cue allows you, again, to hear what, you know, you're queuing up on one turntable and back spinning and queuing up and, and, and all that stuff, slip, getting ready to slip cue a record that no one can hear. You just hear in the headphones while the other, you know, turntable, the record on it plays um, out to over the loudspeakers. So a headphone cue system, you know, um, you know, was of, around years and decades before Flash. It was used in uh, radio and broadcast technology. Um, the early DJ mixers, so most, uh, all of the, the first DJ mixer that ever came out called Rosie, which was made for a disco DJ named Francis Grasso, um, you know, it had a headphone cue on it. The uh, first install mixers, like the Bozaks and stuff, they all had headphone cues on them. Um, and even the mobile, uh, the early mobile uh, disco DJ mixers, like the GLI that uh, Cool Herc used, even had a headphone cue on it, but Herc never used it. Now, Flash didn't, you know, again, these mixers, these, 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 essentially the brain of the DJ technology, they're friggin' expensive. They were hard, they were hard to get. They were rare. They didn't make a lot of them. Um, and again, many of them were installation, meaning they were made specifically for a club or installed in a club. There wasn't a lot of mobile DJ mix mixers that were affordable, like there are now, you know. And so what Flash had is he had what was called a Sony MX-8. It was a, 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 an eight channel, I believe, a microphone mixer. Not at all <clears throat> meant for DJ, like cutting up records, you know. And this Sony MX-8 did not have a headphone cue on it. so. So anyways, Flash, you know, um, he had seen Herc using his mixer and not using the headphone cue to cue up his brakes. He thought Herc was sloppy. Um, and then basically from, you know, from what I hear, Flash, you know, was a delivery boy and he went, I don't know, delivered something at a radio station. He saw someone using, um, you know, saw a DJ using a headphone cue there. Now, um, and it gave him like an epiphany, you know, and then apparently he used a mixer 
um, by, that was owned by Grandmaster Flowers, and Flowers was a notable, um, you know, disco DJ uh, in the hood uh, at the time, an older dude, you know, and, and that gave Flash an idea for his quick mix, which was basically this. If he could know where the one was on the break, so the boom, cap, boom, ba boom, cap, boom, boom, cap, boom, boom, so the boom, you know, the one, two, three, four, boom, two, three, four, you know, whatever it is. If he could cue that up and hear that without people hearing it, he could create an on-time infinite loop, you know, where between taking two copies of the same record and cutting them up on time um, and creating, you know, a 10-minute loop out of a 10-second drum break using two copies of the, of the same record. Now, his Sony MX-8 did not have a headphone cue, so he made what he called a peekaboo system. Um, he basically went to Radio Shack and he got the, the, the pieces for it. Um, the image I'm showing you is actually from the set of the Get Down. Um, my dude Duke was um, um, a prop master for that show and I did a lot of consultation on the, the equipment used. Um, you know, talking about faculty esoteric academia, that's where, like, I study DJ mixers just and write about that shit. Um, anyways, um, he, he went, you know, with Flash to Radio Shack and they bought all the pieces to, to recreate um, his peekaboo system. So a lot of people, you know, and that allowed Fra Flash to, while the drum break was playing on one side, he could cue up the drum break on the other side um, to the one, to the top of the drum break, and then he could, using the faders, he could kick it over to that record and have it, and have it be on time. So he didn't invent the uh, headphone cue, he just invented a new use for it. Before that, disco DJs would use it to cue, cue up a record, drop it on the one, on beat, and then slowly mix over. Now Flash employed this in a different way to create the loop, or an A loop, okay? Um, you know, and that was like a major, major, major thing is that he was able to control time and create this like infinite loop and take records and rearrange them into a whole new arrangement that was in time, that was musical, okay? Um, and really what, what he did is he prefigured this, 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 this technique that prefigured digital sampling of creating loops of analog sampling. So the DJ taking two copies of the same record, if you watch those videos, um, you know, what I did was cutting up a couple copies of the same record on time and creating a loop. And the loop is foundational to hip hop, you know, and to all other forms of electronic music, dubstep, EDM, whatever it is. It's all loop based, house, techno, um, etc. You know, and Flash really was the one that pioneered this, this idea of looping something, you know, of making a loop. And this manifested in different ways. People using drum machines to make a loop, people um, using samplers to make loops, etc. Okay. Um, and he was, you know, uh, also really known for a couple other things. Uh, he was known for uh, body tricks. So he would, um, you know, and you kind of see a little bit of this, uh, you know, if we watch the Wild Style video, but, you know, he would use his arm on the crossfader, his elbow. Um, you'll see as we get into later units, DJs using their back or their nose um, or their belly. Biz Bismarck, he uses his belly. Um, Flash would spin around, go under his legs, all sorts of stuff, stuff like that. He was also notable because he would use a drum machine in his, in his, in his sets. Um, so he would live, basically live finger drum and bang, bang out beats um, for the Furious Five uh, to rhyme over. Okay. Um, yeah, Flash is the king of the quick mix. That's from Super Rappin', if you remember, mem remember that song, um, you know. But he had a pretty tumultuous relationship with um, Sugar Hill Records I'll talk about in a second. But, yeah, if you watch this clip here, uh, this is a clip of him in the movie Wild Style from 1982 with Fab Five Freddy. This is in Flash's um, uh, kitchen. It's a very iconic scene from the movie because you 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 get to see him visually what he's doing is he's doing his quick mix theory he's cutting up two records um the headhunters god made me funky and um the beginning drum break part or drum break part of bob james uh take me to mardi gras uh if you see the commercial copy this is a little side note if you see the commercial copy 
of Wild Style once um, that movie got like a little bit of mainstream distribution and ownership, etc. Uh, Bob James rejected his his song being cut up in there, and so they had to they had to piece in something else. So the original has that. Um, now this is what this is what Flash would say. He said the quick mix theory. You know, taking a section of music. This is this is Flash defining it. Taking a section of music and cutting it on time back to back in 30 seconds or less it was basically to take a particular passage of music and rearrange the arrangement by way of rubbing the record back and forth and cutting the record or back spinning the record. So he employed all of his techniques. Now you have to understand the headphone cue was so essential to this because before that, you know, a lot of DJs and Flash included, um, without a headphone cue, the way they would try to cue up the record was one, number one, needle drop it, you know, and that you may be there. Um, the other way you could do it is when you play a, a, a record and it's not playing over the loudspeakers, um, you can actually hear the needle uh, transcribing the grooves um, if you put your ear real close. Um, you know, so what dudes would do, you can, if you can see any old footage before they had headphones on, you can see fools like leaning down, uh, trying to hear, hear the actual vinyl producing some sort of, you know, uh, sound so they could, they, they could cue, up a, cue up a record. Very, very inefficient and, you know, you never know what you would get. So, you know, Flash would use the headphone, his peak abu system, which is super important. I'll talk about a few of his techniques and demonstrate his quick mix theory for y'all using the same records that he used in Wild Style, just so you can see it um, a little bit more uh, up close and personal, so to, so, to, so, to, so to speak. But that's, you know, that was a major thing. And then he eventually moved on to, uh, if you watch the Get Down, there's a part where he uses a crayon to make marks on his records. That's to mark where the drum breaks are. So he had a visual representation. It's called clock theory. And I'll talk about that and show that in a second. 